All right, ladies and gents, little 1v1 high-level nomad here. Um, these players are around 2K, 2K1, all right? Uh, Black Forest, I made a video on already. Black Forest has done some pretty wacky strategies before. Players also known as Matza. I didn't know at the time making the video that this is a player who was really good, who then changed their name and whatnot. But anyways, so we've got Matza, or Black Forest, who is what you should probably call them now, against um, an Argentinian player who I think has made their name after Nikov. This is not Nikov. Can someone tell me what Lodigio means? This person's like 2K, 2K1. I forget their name. Red equals Nikov said it. Okay. Hold on. What's the dashboard say? The dashboard should tell me. Dashboard says Dexter. Okay, Dexter. Let's put Dexter here. And it'll still show Nikov said it at the bottom right. All right. I know Dexter. Dexter's a player who's played this game a lot. Um, again, being around the 2K, 2K1 level um, means you played the game for a long time. And Dexter dates back to, to pre-definitive edition like a lot of high-level players do. So so we've got uh, the Incas for Dexter, a sieve that's super flexible. You also get the free llama, which is going to be really nice on Nomad. Look, there's no sheep. Oh no, whatever will we do? Whatever will we do? We have no food. Life is horrible. But wait, we're the Incas, and... Where is it? Oh, okay, way to ruin it, llama. I don't know why the llama didn't spawn underneath the TC, but okay, it's not a big deal. Uh, now you got a llama, cool. Um, not only that is helpful for a Nomad start, but also the... Um, the fact that your house gives you extra pop space is super nice because it's always a little awkward when you're trying to make fishing ships combined with uh, houses and whatnot at the start. So Spanish, uh, on the other side of things, they do build faster, but that does not apply to their town center. It only applies to other things. They changed that recently because Nomad, like Spanish are still insane on Nomad, but they were like maybe the best Nomad if just simply due to building the TC so quickly. Um, but you know, the other big thing you think of when you're thinking about the Spanish is really the Conquistador. So very frequently with the Spanish, you're going to see them aim to go for Fast Castle. And I'm looking around. The stone is over here, which is pretty far away. Obviously, the players are pretty close together here. So, um, should be fun. The dock for Black Forest is over on this side. Sorry about the white boxes on the fish, by the way. I uh, I play with that on, but I I need to remove it before casting, and you guys are probably used to this by now, but I forget a lot. Um, they're just zoned in. They're not allowed. There's, like, zoning laws in the water, and they're not allowed to leave the zones, right? So uh, it's currently this whole big thing. There's, you know, a whole school of fish that are very much against the zoning laws, and they're, they're hopefully going to be inspiring change but um you know so the dock is over here in the west now and then the dock is very much northish for dexter and that could be a problem here because with spanish you want to have your fish as safe as possible for as long as possible usually the spanish are not competing for water so i think that black forest is going to be in a really good spot here like i think there's only if both players are playing at the same level which i would expect I feel like there's only like maybe three to five sieves that could compete with Spanish on Nomad. They are that good. I would say Malians. I really like Lithuanians. I actually think Italians are underrated. Um, Persians. This, all those sieves I mentioned are like really flexible with their starts. And then... I mean, there are other sieves that could come to mind. Like I think Berbers and going Camel Archer could be really fun. But I think the civs I mentioned are, are like the civilizations to, to really compete here with the Spanish. Nomad, kind of like Arena. Uh, it, it is very civ dependent, so I don't know if they've gone pick civ here or random civ, but the Incas are certainly not the worst. I just think they could be a bit of a struggle. Uh, Ozone with the raid. Yo, salutes and chat please for Ozone. Ozone, you played incredible against MBL. You really did. Thought you had him. You're playing super clean, my friend. Thank you for the raid. Um, also, Gabred, thank you for the new sub. Thank you, Glad Recycler. Says, finally, not a Facebook sub. I can message with 
1590 salute. Thank you, Glad Recycler, for the subs on Facebook and, and this as well. Apogee, uh, Cass, thank you. Uh, I was Beer Baron on Facebook, by the way, though I mostly lurked this Cass. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, some people use the same name. Some people didn't have a username and they used their pages. So I, I, it's always good to, to know who you were. I'll, I might forget, but it's always good. Good to know that kind of stuff. Uh, lots of new subs, actually, in chat. Holy crap, you guys are making me feel better about streaming at this time. I didn't do it expecting new subs, but I knew that people want to watch me at this time, so here we are. So, again, it's Fast Castle from Black Forest. Double Dock Fish Boom, huh? Wow, that's interesting. And Red is on the way up already. This feels like red is going to go for water. Like, look at all the wood here. Wood's going to be spent on something here soon. Never located the enemy dock or TC. However, this sheep is lost. Actually, at a very convenient time for blue as well. But blue doesn't need the sheep because blue's bringing in another boar. I think that's boar number four. I really, like, this. is this a fast imp here, Black Forest? From my perspective, Black Force is going to have food for days. Still hasn't clicked up to the next stage. There's Red now. Red's like, ooh, Lumber Camp. And Red, second dock, seven fishing ships. Has sent three villagers over to gold, so it could be galleys or could be fire galleys. Galleys are in a better position to, um, to kill the fish faster. But fire galleys give you the better edge to fully win water long term. And I, I think something that is underrated here, guys, is you go two galleys because you kill the fish fast, then go fire galleys so you don't lose water. Does that make sense? Outpost villagers really nice as well. Another boar! Jeez! That's so much food. Food count should be ridiculous for blue. Like, I think we, you can't really tell just yet because there's two villas in queue and all these villagers here are still holding food. But not on stone right now. And Red still making outposts. Red is expecting something off this fast castle. But those galleys, how long were they there? Oh, geez. Oh, well, it wasn't that long, but every second counts, of course. And those galleys need to move now. Okay, so this is where it gets tricky. You need to build, use your wood to build a market and a blacksmith to be able to go fast castle, right? Which means you then do not have the wood to make navy. You also then, and this is very well executed here from blue. You also then uh, can't spend gold on navy right now because you don't have the proper amount of gold to spend the gold and still have the gold to go up. <laughs> that is a funny market. <laughs> That's funny. I love how Blue didn't even know that it was right up against the wall in the outpost. Here's the first galleys. Now, it's just two galleys, and that's it. So, Blue's going to be okay to, to run away. I, I would suggest here you actually let that run, and you go to those docks and try and stop that food income. But that could still happen. Red did have the wall further behind that, which is hilarious. Red's also going to make a market here. And Red's going to try and go up. I love the outpost. I'm pretty sure Town Watch is in as well. I also love the joke that somebody made earlier that said, because Nikov's in their name, they're definitely not going to get eco upgrades. Red did get eco upgrades. Nikov, if you're out there, I did not make the joke. Somebody else made the joke. I know you're good with eco upgrades now. Okay, so now, you know, that fire galley shows up, and that fire galley can push this back, but red could still technically be more assertive here. Probably doesn't expect there to be that many fish, though. And like I said about the food, look at that food count right now from blue. And blue is going to walk over here to where the stone is, and is going to go for the stone, and red can see those villagers. So now it's kind of like, what do you do? They both have nine fishing ships. Obviously, Blue lost three, but Blue doesn't care. I hate that tower with a passion. But the idea here is Blue knows I'm vulnerable here. 
and my enemy might spot me without post or something. Let's see, does it really affect the efficiency that much? This is actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I would never have placed that tower myself. You can actually still take this stone. Let's see, when they drop off the stone, let's see what happens. I think we're just going to see this, uh, any like leftover stone be purchased, possibly, at the market. We're going to see a new dock. First upgrade is the War Galley, and that's to dominate water. With the upgraded ships, and then go kill Red's Fish. This is a redock, so the fishing still can, can happen down here. And I think Black Forest has played this pretty textbook, except for it doesn't have the castle yet. And we have to see the barracks from Red. Now in archer range. Archers could come out then. Red also has played very well. Both experienced Nomad players here. Very well played. Repairs are going to need to happen on the weak ship. That should happen. We should have a couple more fires here from Red. And then the War Galley upgrade as well. Red is working off of three docks. So ideally, you're going to have the back dock research War Galley. Obviously, throughout this time, Blue's still mining the stone. I need to drink my seltzer. One sec. It's that kind of Wednesday. And um, yeah, this is still pretty good. So ideally, Red is going to do something to, to prep for the Conquistadors. You can't really deny it now. I think the biggest part about denying Conquistadors from having success, though, is killing the fish. Which is something that Blue's been able to do some of. Neither player with a demo in queue. It feels like good demo territory in this choke point. And there's going to be a TC now from Black Forest. So not saving... I mean, did is still saving for the castle, but decides to go for the second town center first. And there go the fire galleys. Nice play from Dexter here. And then we see the second TC over here. Uh, people are asking what rank this is. These guys are just under 2k1 right now. So, uh, I forget what puts you in the top 100 these days. I think 2k1 or 2k2-ish does? They're very close. Maybe just outside of it. I think there's only 300 people, and this is including Smurf accounts, like 300, 350 people who are above 2k. So, uh, I, I would have to check. It also depends on... You know, when we're talking, that might have changed a little bit, but... Nice defense there from Blue. That TC on the stone could be intentional to maybe be to prep for eventual castle for Trebs or something. I Guys, like, they both have done so many fun little nomad things. Blue has found all the boars. Blue fighting for water, which, like... We casted mid elo and low elo this past Tuesday on Nomad. And, like, nobody was doing that. And no one really thought the water was important. Uh, red with all the outposts is super strong. And blue is in the dark. And uh, awkward time for these villagers. Black Forest a little distracted on the water. And one of those villagers is going to go down. And now we have a very panicky castle. But that castle is going to go up. That castle will definitely go up. Big boom. Burn! Sick demo there from Dexter. And all three... Uh, sorry, just two TCs here from Blue to protect this area. Now you start to transition into farms. But, like, you still... And this is smart from Blue. You sit in the choke point. I suggest this. It makes life so much easier for you. Sit in the choke point with those demos. Wait for them to run into you. But now Conquistors are going to come out. And you can tell... That red is a little worried about this. We're having some skirms. We've got the monks, too. A combination can be really good. And blue's still fishing down here. Red's still fishing over here. I think red's fish are a little bit more efficient. But look at... Uh, sorry, I didn't complete my point. Look at what red has done with all the outposts and houses. That is so good. Because you don't have a scout on this map, right? Vision is everything. Here comes the Conquistadors. Now, Blue didn't know about this whole building wall. Blue now knows, I can't go this way. So it's smart from Blue not to do that. This villager, Red probably just selected all the idols and said, go to work. And that villager's like, okay. <laughs> Don't tell me he's gonna make it home! 
This villager has seen some stuff, all right? This villager's got stories to tell. Stories that the rest of the town will not believe. Like, I built houses next to a bush and a deer. Next to a... United States-sized woodline. Look at that. It's kind of shaped like the United States, if Florida didn't exist, but... United States in, uh, what, 50 years? That's when I'll be underwater in Florida, right? Um... You know, a couple houses over there as well. Anyways, we've got action. She's dead. She couldn't... She wasn't cut out for this job. And, uh... Oh, my goodness. Wow, Red apparently knows what's going on with monks. And normally, conquistadors can have a little bit of confidence heading in towards monks. But two conversions from Blue... Who was laser-focused there on the conks. And the skirms are there as well. And, and listen, you give up on the conquistador dream. You give up on it. Now. Okay? A lot of people... They play a lot of Nomad, and they say, give me conk, 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 and more conk. Stop it. Your opponent's got the counter. You stop it. It's a double counter. I think instead, if you want to make something, I think going for a big boom, which is what Blue's going to do, but also Light Cav could be good. Or, to you know, you could go Conquistador and Light Cav, because then the Light Cav could help here, but... What a fun game. I don't think Blue realizes how much of this eco is in Red's vision right now. <laughs> That's wild to me. Still fighting on water here, by the way. Um, Red must have repaired a whole bunch of ships here. And that one's going to be left behind. The fishing ships. We even have a redock here from Red, so the fish is a bit more efficient that way. Yes. Skirm is moving this way. And what a fun game! This is a great game. A great Nomad game. We've got to see so many different bonuses at play. I still prefer the Spanish. I feel like you know, getting a little bit of gold when you complete a tech is smooth. Building buildings faster smooth. Conquistador light cav is really hard to stop. But I think red is actually arguably maybe even play the better game. Maybe with the worst civilization. And I've noticed that red's got a lot of focus on individual movements. Getting lots of techs. Lots of focus on the water. That said blue kind of defended there. Um... Getting the positions, getting the vision. Look at what Blue's been doing. Blue has been farming like a maniac. And I imagine that's going to be reflected in the food collected here. Look at the food difference. Crazy. And again, this is where, like, I, it's so important that Blue stop making Kikisadors. Because you save that food and gold to go imp. And here for me, Light Cav is the play. And there's the stable. We might see multiple. And now this castle from Red, Red is thinking, I've got to get rid of this castle and treb that down. And that's a nice castle to, to possibly accomplish that, but something you never know when you're playing is if your opponent is on the way to Imp. Blue sees this. Blue might not be able to deny it. We'll see. But Blue won't be too disappointed to see that going up since Blue is going to be the Imperial Age first. Now the Conquistadors that Red converted earlier can actually deal with the Siege. But wow, repairs from blue. Ugh. Nope, repairs don't cut it. Kongs have to back away. It's going to be knights even. So, did Red see the double stable? Okay, Red just saw one. I mean, that stable, you don't really know. Red could see all these farms, though. I'd, be, I'd feel very intimidated if I saw that amount of farms here. Uh, Rim Dragon says... Uh, I'm so happy that you are live late, T90. Uh, this is a rerun. Did no one tell? This is a rerun, guys. I'm not live. Live at 8 p.m. on a Wednesday? What is this? This is a rerun. I have pre-recorded responses to all your subs and support. But thanks for thinking it's live. Uh, thank you, Jimmy Smiles, for the 15. Thank you, Super B War, for subbing during a rerun. Thank you, Fake News, for the five months. Thank you, guys. There's a couple people who are really gullible, who have a lot of faith in me, and believe I would never deceive them, that are a little confused right now, but it's slowly dawning on them. Slowly. There's a couple. Right? You can see there's a couple people. They're like, oh, he's, oh, you got me. Oh, okay. Dad, stop making dumb jokes. Um, anyways, fishing ships killed from blue. Nice play from red to finally kill the fish, but blue transitioned into the farms very nicely. Shout out to that sheep there, by the way. Just chilling. 
Armor upgrades on the way right now for Black Forest, and Trebs are on the way, and still 40 seconds away from the Imperial Age is red. So this castle is going to go down. The positive for you, Red. And notice how Red sent three skirms forward and got scared. Like, Red's scared because of that stable there. But I would say the positive for Red is that your castles are cheaper with Inca, so you could always make another one. But I would say uh, textbook. Textbook like Nomad for blue here. You clear this castle and you storm this hill and drop your own. And Red doesn't want to allow that. So Red already teched into a lot of text for ranged units. So a lot of people are going to say, why no how, right? Well, the reason for that when you're in a time crunch is you've researched zero armor upgrades and attack upgrades for infantry right now. What you did do is get a lot of range tech, and you already have the archer ranges. So players will just go, like, a better form. Like, instead of skirms, they go arbalest here. So they, they can have a response faster, basically. Uh, but this is going to be tricky. You can tell Blue wants to come forward. Maybe take that castle, but now the Trebs are going to see the castle. This gives Red time, but Red doesn't really have a lot on gold. We got more villagers going to gold here. Panic time with the gold all in this area of your screen. And it's mainly Skirmishers still. And the Mangonel able to help out, killing some of the crossbows. The Light Calf go in, kill some of the monks. The Knights are then here. Imp armor on the Knights. Not Cavalier, but still doing a good job. And then the Conks are back here, and the GG's called. Because Red knows, I'm toast. This castle will go down. Blue will then probably storm that hill, drop the castle. And for all the good things that Red did in this game, it was the farming eco from Blue. And, you know, Elite Skirm and upgrades, not that, not that cheap. We had, like, relatively early ballistics from Red, lots of monks from Red. But, you know, the Spanish continue to, to chug along there with their eco and always in a pretty good spot to keep fighting nice nice play there though that was a good game i think honestly this was an execution win from blue in the sense that blue just macroed really well uh with the with the farming eco um and and that was what opened up more options i think red was later to imp because red was putting a little bit more focus possibly on some of the little cutesy stuff. Ideally, you do the little cutesy stuff. Sorry for using the word cutesy, but, uh, you know, ideally you do that stuff while also farming a lot, but obviously that's kind of tricky to do. And maybe Blue having a more compact base helped with that. Um, you know, maybe we could have seen a little bit more from that from Red if Red would have maybe uh, had a little bit more control. I don't know. Do you think Red overcommitted to water? No, I think water was pretty 50-50. I do think that red could have had more success killing the fish earlier, though. Like, um, that is that is one thing. Like, I noticed that the second the fire showed up, red ran home with the galleys. Let's go back to that. That's actually one of the biggest tips I could give red. So we'll speed through it real quick. You're just here to kill fish, right? The fire galleys are going to help you in the fights later. But look, see, red sees that, and red runs away... Like, this is the bully that keeps stealing his lunch money, right? That's not what you do. You avoid the bully, all right? And you go around and you kill the bully's family's fish, all right? Uh, you don't run home with those galleys. You could tell why Red did it, right? Red did it to, you know, make more fires. And then the fires compete. But that gave Blue time. I think these galleys are just fish killers. And that could have led to four or five different fishing ships being killed. Honestly, though... Look at Blue's food count. Blue did a sick job getting so much food in the Dark Age and Feudal Age. So that, that still obviously wouldn't... Um, it, it wouldn't have ended the game, but it would have influenced it, right? Because that's eight units bringing in food nonstop for Blue. That helped with adding Eco and eventually everything else. But nobody laughed or could relate to the lunch money comment. No, no don't kill the bully's family. It was a, it was a weird joke about the... fit. Nobody got their lunch money stolen? Nobody? Really? Not once? Huh. Yeah, me either. Never happened to me. Oh, wait. We got to look at resources collected. This is awkward. Uh, what type of caster am I? Um, all right. Let's see. Res collected in the, throughout the game. Sorry. I got to show these details. At, yeah, it was a crazy, crazy boom here. 
from Black Forest. Uh, 12k food collected against 8k. And then uh, obviously had the gold and the stone lead as well. So I think it was a macro win more than anything. But the fear of the conquistadors constantly scaring you. Um, <laughs> constantly scaring you and, and making you feel you need to prep a lot of stuff. And you prep the stuff to stop the conks, but then the eco can lead to other things anyways. Crazy stuff.